Hi everyone, welcome back to Hit or Miss Hallmark Movie Reviews. I'm Daniela. And I'm John. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And click the little bell to receive notifications every time we upload a new video. We're back. We've been gone for a very long time. It long felt, for us. It felt like a long time. It was only like two and a half weeks. That was a long, that it felt like a very long time. I feel yeah. out of the loop. I thank, feel like I don't know how to do this. Thank you to every single subscriber, basically, who didn't unsubscribe. Yeah, we thank kind you. Of, <laughs> we weren't sure how that was going to go. I know, because we're still so new to this, we're not sure if like being away for that long would have a negative impact. I mean, I guess it could, I don't but think people are us? dying to hear us. Wow, well, obviously. <laughs> but um, so where have we been? We had a major deadline to meet for our new short film. Yes, well now old short film. It's out, it's out into the world. We're making film festival submissions as we speak. Uh -huh. and, and it's exciting. And we'll tell you more about it when yeah. uh, we're able to and show you probably. Yeah, and on to the next one now. Indeed. It never ends. So in, in that breath, it was nice to get back to Hallmark. Um, and we were looking forward to it and yeah. very much looking forward to Christmas. But with that, we didn't really watch too many previews the last few weeks. We didn't know what we were expecting with this movie. Uh, but yeah, today we are reviewing Autumn in the City. Mm -hmm. So what's this one about? Piper, played by Amy Teagarden, moves to New York for a fresh start. She's eager to take on any work that helps pay the bills and gets her closer to her dream job while still pursuing her passion for illustration. She soon meets Austin, played by Evan Roderick, an aspiring children's author, despite his mother's reservations about it. The magic of the autumn season brings Piper and Austin close together. They team up on a children's book project, during which they come to a great realization about passion, life, and, and love. love. <laughs> I made it back. So what did you think of this? I think the overarching theme here is this is meant to be a love letter to New York, a place where your dreams can come true, where you can reinvent yourself. And I felt that. I yeah. felt that. And, 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 you know, it didn't hit you over the head with it as Wasn't much as other... Wasn't overly preachy. Yeah, um, no. and, but... and both of them ended up in a cute place. Yeah. Which I knew I was going to like immediately. I thought that the pacing was great. It was really quick, which was good, and it kept my interest. I was engaged for the most part. Um, one thing I really liked was that montage scene of both Piper and Austin at their like respective workplaces, showing just how much they hate this never ending like hamster wheel of yeah. getting a job and getting paid and then working on your passion at night and then going back to the job that you hate and then and that, and that's a cycle. Weird, that's a weird thing with this movie is it kind of did some things like it, it had three different montages. Oh, and okay, usually yeah. it, I would say in any movie that's too much, it's not gonna work on paper, that doesn't feel like it works, but somehow this movie pulled it off. All three montages kind of like lent to the story there you know the one where they're fighting and then there was oh, the work I one I remember okay yeah yeah, yeah okay. and they, they did it in a, a, a pretty creative way i guess and yeah it, and it made the movie flow a lot better like they were able to kind of like iron out a lot of extra characters that didn't necessarily need to be in it like the second set of parents or, or something oh like yeah that. yeah that was just thrown in at the end her parents no yeah yeah there was like yeah. they were in the car for like two minutes two and minutes <laughs> and just to show their disapproval of her being reckless and irresponsible by moving to new york city with no like backup plan. Yeah, it felt like they were kind of just <laughs> it's like, hammer, okay, we get it. hammering home yeah. uh, a likeness between the two leads, I suppose. As I mentioned, it kept my interest, but you know, only like at a low level. I wasn't overly engaged. I looked at my phone multiple times. I was on my computer. Yeah, me too. It was okay. But like, I didn't, I'm not going to say I, I loved I this I still managed to catch means. everything. No, I, def I definitely didn't love it, but I, I certainly liked it. And I don't know if it was because we were off Hallmark for a couple weeks and, yeah, maybe. and watching other like very violent <laughs> things. <laughs> This was just like, oh, Tis this is the nice. season for that, but... I, I'm, you know, so, I mean, this one just tickled me properly. Uh, phrasing? So I talked about the thing that I liked. I liked the montage scenes. I liked the pacing. I liked the cute aspects of it. I like pursuing your passion and dreams and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as it's not too, too much of a cliche, although I think it was a little presented like too much of a cliche in this movie. I think that trope and that or that that writing style is very preachy. Well, what any I any like... achieve your dreams when it's associated with a city is like mm. Yeah, I know. But you know, in but terms of I didn't like her character at all. I, I don't like this willy nilly misguided woman. I, it's just a little exhausting for me. I mean I get the trope for sure. I just think we can move beyond that even in Hallmark yeah, movies. I... Right? And I you know if you're gonna do it that way I can't not compare it to like La La Land, even though you shouldn't be comparing Hallmark movie to a huge Hollywood blockbuster movie, but they did it much better and in a not too preachy kind of a way. 
Well, I, I mean, I, I, I and I kind of disagree, even though La La Land, I know to be a great movie, it seems more preachy. It's like two actors in LA and like and so much, so much. Okay, it's like, at least this one, preachy? this one had two separate stories of like cuteness. Like one's an illustrator that she doesn't know she's an illustrator and is obviously going to fit with this guy wanting to write children's stories. Both very cute little sort of side stories of yeah. them trying to break out of a corporate world. And I mean, okay, so I'll take that back. <laughs> La La Land definitely was preachy and it very much romantic the whole idea of going for your dreams and sacrificing everything else in your life, which is what these two characters essentially did as well. Yeah. But one comes with a very famous mother who's a very well-known journalist and pretty much has a backup plan. So that's Austin's character. Yeah, yeah, I, um, I like that. Or like a security the, blanket, the, I should the say. The parental pressure on his side was pretty heavy. I wasn't too sure about her, if she had some sort of nest egg or something, but she's subletting the largest, I mean, we get to this in Nitpicky too, but I don't understand how big these new York City apartments are for these people. Like, I don't He's get gotta it. He's got to assume that people are left big places by grandparents so, like, or something. Yeah, and yeah, of course. But, yeah. you know, you gotta. Um, but, but in he... terms of Amy Teagarden, actually, I think she does a really good job at filling the void that Candace Cameron used to. Like, CCB used to really? take those roles. You think she's the yeah, one? Yeah, I think she is the one. And wow. she was the one that they were talking about replacing the Teagarden mysteries with, namesake not oh, only, because she, like, I think she does a better job than CCB. She managed to make a character that I know I wouldn't like. Most other people, most other people would not have played that character any better than Candace yet. Cameron. And I, think... I don't like Candace Cameron very much, so it's like. Oh, I... see, I, I do like Candace. I do like Candace in Hallmark movies. I like Amy T. Garden. I don't love. her. Her. I don't love her yet, but uh, she, she impressed me in this me. one. She's she, she was cute in character. I don't think she's like, there for me yet. She's not there like replacing Candace Cameron. Just no, no. Yet. I, I think they're just looking for. I'll have to see more of her to know that. Yeah, I guess. You so. know? Um, but yeah, overall, I just don't think this movie was very memorable. I, I can't even recall the final kiss. Nothing I mean, really there was stands act, out. There's actually like two and a half. Yeah, and pieces. I can't even I, recall it. The I only sort of thing, remember it was because they held off for a long time. Figure, I didn't right? even so, really feel like tension. It was more like enemy tension. They, they, they played, that's a different That's a different angle too. And I know that's what I'm talking about, CCB. She's played a couple movies where I didn't feel she's it. basically enemies with the guy until they fall in love or, you know. I didn't feel it. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I quite liked it. So why don't we talk about performances? Okay. So I thought both leads were good. Not great. I actually wasn't really liking Austin for the most part of the movie, but I eventually came around to, to yeah. liking his character and understanding the purpose of his character. Yeah, yeah. You, you seem to have a thing with like, especially new younger guys that come, and especially new younger Maybe. cocky guys, you automatically almost Don't always like hate them. And I'm like, <laughs> just give it time. Like they're trying to, he's, he's, know, he's trying to I carve know. his own Hallmark dude, right? <laughs> so it's like, we're also hitting a generational gap. It's like a lot of people I see on Facebook commenting, they're like, they're just not the same as they used to. It's like, well, well, the hunks are now millennials or younger, so you have to like, you have yeah. to let it grow with the times, unfortunately. <laughs> Even I just it's... thought, okay, like I know you have a comment about this, but I just wasn't overly excited or impressed by any of the performances. It was just very like straight ahead. No, I definitely wasn't like blown back or anything. I just thought it, they, I thought they both ended up having chemistry, or they both just acted well themselves on screen. I acted well enough for it to not to be cheesy. I kind of wanted to dislike this one for whatever reason. I wanted to as well, <laughs> and I and I actually started off disliking it as I mentioned, but I did end up liking it in the end. I didn't love it. I I can hardly remember any of the scenes. So, I mean, that says something. But it, I didn't hate it. And it, it had cute moments. And because it had like good pacing, you know, I'm leaning more towards, you know, saying I really liked it. Well, not really liked it, but I liked it. it, it I liked it. Yeah, it did it for me. Was there someone who was a standout? Like, there was no standout no, for me. No, not really. I no. mean, okay. I, w I guess I would say Amy T. Garden only okay. because she seemed closer to a reoccurring Hallmark lady we could see. Yeah, okay. Like, she seems kind of young, you know? Yeah, she does, she does. And she's cute, and she's sweet, and she has an appeal, I get mm. it, yeah. Uh, and then Vincent Gale is in this movie. So yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to play a little game show here because we were yeah. talking about it during the movie, and it's time for British or Not. Oh. So we saw him in Road Trip Romance, and he played the, like, the, gay, the gay uncle that moved uncle. to California, yeah. but he had like the perfect um, royal accent. Gearing up to take over the throne, I suppose. It's coming ever closer. Yeah. And, and then we saw him in this movie, and he had, it was very American sounding. I was like, Austin, let's hit the ground running. We're doing a piece on the founder of a new tech startup. Why don't you take the lead on this? Like, oh, I can't tell. Both accents are very good. He's very good. So we were talking, and... Uh, I'm going to say... Not British. 
He's not British. Ah, uh, there you go. He's actually Canadian. <gasps> Fantastic. I swear to get a little bit nitpicky. We already yes. touched on this a little bit, but I, the swipes the, for transitions, I just thought there was way too many of them. You don't like the swipes? I don't like the swipes. I, I'm I like okay with one or two. When you start using more, it's like, what, did you not have a proper cutaway? I, to I, I get it, like, but I also I see there's gotta be like transition continuity. So it's like once you put like one or two in, it's like, oh, it really worked there, or you needed it there, then it's like, you gotta put up the rest of the film. I mean, for me- And they did, there was a large chunk in the middle where they didn't use it at all, and then they went back to it. For me, the use of a swipe is you're covering up something. I know, because that's why we used a swipe. <laughs> So it's like, okay, uh, but we used one swipe and I felt like it was okay and it wasn't as distracting as it was here. Yeah, I'm gonna swipe this whole video. They over you. I'm gonna swipe oh this God. entire video. Of course you are. Like. Of course you are. <laughs> uh, and then as I mentioned, the apartment, you know, huge, like exposed brick apartments in New York City. I get she was subletting, but even still, yeah. how much could that be? That's insane. For someone who's who abandoned everything and got went to New York without a job and is getting like all these random parts time job. I'm trying not to even look at that anymore because you just have to assume it's like, what, they're gonna shoot We have us. to suspend disbelief when it comes to money and careers. Oh yeah, and, and also what to like, do it's also for, for, the, for the craft of film. Like who cares about like realistic continuity in terms of how, what these people can afford. I want to look at a nice big place and have open like, you I know. I mean, it's pretty, of course. Like it's. Know, bring all your expensive cameras and jam into a like it's a pretty, but I don't know. 200 I can't, square foot. I can't help but go there. I always look at the apartment. I always look at the settings like, damn, like why are yeah. they in such a I'm, nice I'm, expensive Yeah, I'm more jealous. Like, I want to shoot it in that. Um, okay. Yeah, and I, I had I had a couple of one with character based Piper when she turned down the like the three month oh, yeah. theater tour. I was like, that you literally wouldn't have spent any of the money you made. You would have came back and been able to like afford a place in, in New York and then figure your shit out. And it's, I mean, yeah. As if you would really give that up. Like, what an insane opportunity they, for someone who doesn't have a job. They did kind of patch it up because they made it so she didn't not take it. She just she questioned it and then the lady was like, all right, screw you. <laughs> I guess. I, I guess she wouldn't want to work did. for someone like that anyway, right? In the end. Yeah. yeah. And then anyway. we have to oh, talk gosh. about it. I feel, I, I almost feel bad talking about it, but this well, is that's very... Just, this is controversial. Like, it's not controversial well, because, okay, okay. Laura Soltis, I love Laura Soltis. Uh, you and, do. I do too. Yeah. And Five Star Christmas. And yeah, she, she's great in every role, basically. Yeah. And she is a, a, a wonderful act actress. Her lips in this movie, and it's not a visual thing. I know a lot of actors and every, everybody gets Botox and that's totally normal and I, I get it. It doesn't look bad her, on her at all, but it was affecting her dialogue. <laughs> like it's, it's her hard, speech, it was like it's hard not her. to hear when like when all, like a lot way. of the, the S's are like F's, like everything is F's. <laughs> it's like, it did sound like that. Was, Honey, you have so much potential. It was bad, and to the point where I started to notice when they shot and when they edit or whatever, because in one scene, she, her lips were like normal and you, you couldn't hear it at all. You know, my family wasn't very thrilled that I left our little town in Ohio. And then it, depending on the shot in the movie, it was like a different grade of, because you know, you get Botox and they're huge. My yeah, message- Yeah, then it wears out. And it then it wears, wears off. off. Sorry, yeah, wears so off. But you have yeah. to know the time. If you're gonna be shooting a movie or something, any actor, actress, if it's gonna affect your, like how you sound on screen, please. Like, yeah, I mean, I, def I definitely it. noticed it. I definitely noticed consider it. Consider when you but, do it. But it yeah. looked, I mean, it looked fun. <laughs> so. She looks great, though. Uh, so, why don't we talk about the writer and the director? So, there's two writers here uh, Joey Elkins. Some other writing credits include Unlocking Christmas, Love on Iceland, and A Christmas Duet. I, don't I don't recall any, I those. Seen any of those. A Christmas those, Duet is. I, I recall. And Unlocking Christmas sounds familiar. Yeah, I, I recall the title seen. of that one, but the other, no. The second writer here is Blake Silver. Some other writing credits include actually the same as Joey Elkins. They've definitely been like. They're like a, a writing oh, right. duo. I mean, there's duo. lots of writing duos. A lot but of people don't. But he's got more acting credits than writing credits. He's been on The Bold and the Beautiful, Glitch, Hot in Cleveland, okay. like a very prolific actor. Yeah. Uh, this was directed by Michael Robeson. Robeson, Michael, Michael Robeson. Robeson. Uh, some other credits include... Fly Away With Me, recently. I think he did Pumpkin Everything. Fly Away With Me, uh, Marry Me in Yosemite, which I hated. Well, I, yeah. I'm sorry, I just did not like that one at all. Uh, dating the Delaney's, which we love. Oh, okay. Well, we love yeah, right. So, oh, yeah, that's where we remember. So he's got from. some good uh, good credits under the, under his name there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. So, did this hit or miss the hallmark for you? 
So this is a, a very soft hit. You gotta stop doing that. I know you hate it. It goes against I the entire reason. name of the channel. I don't care. Hit or <laughs> it's a soft hit. Just pick one. It's a soft pick hit. Pick one. Okay, then it's a hit. I stand by it. And for me, it's a hit because there are our only two choices. <laughs> okay. It wasn't as bad as a miss. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, so why don't we get to our homework checklist, report card. Sure. Tropes we love to see and talk Let's about. Bring them off. Uh, a promotion or a deadline? No. A career-driven lead. Well, I'm gonna say there's there's two, but uh, is it really career-driven or more like passion-driven? Yeah, no, career path. I mean, I guess so, because it ends up being career. Fine, then yes. Sure. Big misunderstanding? No. No. A change of heart. Yes. yes. Always. Someone gets dumped, fired, or dies. I think you said yes. Yes, I and I, they both get fired multiple times. Oh, well, right. He, he gets fired, she gets fired twice, so yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Multiple, and multiple uh, I think he gets dumped at the beginning, too. Oh, did he get dumped? I think so. I don't, oh, I don't know. I, I'm foggy yeah. in the beginning. Second romance subplot. Uh, no. A proposal or a wedding? No. no. Travel issues? No. Oh. Uh, selling a house, business? Cafe, farm? No, 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 no. Big city, small town transition. I said yes because I thought she came from a small town, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, I don't know. She so. left to go to New York. Yeah. But I don't know if she was like from Chicago. Yeah, you or just, usually, you know? yeah usually people just leave from other big cities. <laughs> Try it. Try but it I there. said yes. Okay. I'm saying yes. All right. Uh, the almost kiss? No. There was a moment, but I, I don't think they went there fully. You don't think it. Wasn't, you I'm don't not, think it classified? No. I, I feel like it was. I think you so and me have very different definitions on the almost kiss. Fine. We're gonna have to go. Fine. 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 The mad dash to the airport, or let's go get her. Wait, I remember her running into a cab at the end. I think there yes. is. Yes. Yes, but he, they, well, I said kind of. She, because I mean, she they end up meeting on the street. He was trying to find her. She mad, she, but she, she mad dashes to, a bunch of places. Like she goes and fixes that with, her, with his mom, and then she to goes him. to the publisher, and then to him. No, that wasn't a mad dash to him at the end, I don't think. She was trying to go to the publisher. I think it was. So are we split on this? We might be. I'll have to check. I'm saying no. Check the footage. I'm saying no on this one. Okay. No. I'm reaching. Whatever. Whatever. Anyways, guys, we're happy to be back. Very we're sorry happy to be we back. were away, but yeah, whenever there's a short film that we're working on, we're gonna try. But at most, it'll be a week or two weeks or well, something yeah, that we'd be away. Yeah. Keep people involved in the process. Um, yeah. So I did want to also mention Christmas. Yeah, we're going to be trying some shorts. I wear short shorts. And we're going to be doing our regular videos for every review, but we want to do all of the Christmas previews as shorts. Yeah. It feels like a fun, like, one minute thing, extra thing we can add. We'll just and talk videos about seem to each take new longer. Christmas movie. Yeah, before they air. Yeah. It might be useful. Tiny <laughs> bit, like who's in it, one line, what it's about, and if we're like eagerly anticipating it or not. And maybe a prediction or something. Like maybe, if we can all fit it in into one minute. I know shorts are, you know, kind of debatable whether people love them or hate them. I don't know. Yeah, but we just want We thought know. we would try. Hopefully it seemed it... like a good, like, foray. Foyer? Foray. Foray? Oh, God. Foray. Why can't I speak? I'm I... tired. I'm sorry if you hate them. We're going to just try them. They'll be short, obviously, clearly. Um, <laughs> Just for a quick It'll little preview of, the, of what's to come for Christmas. And, and we're then excited about Christmas. Reviews. Crazy excited. I can't believe it's starting this Friday. It's so soon. Oh my gosh. We already bought decorations and stuff. Yeah. We're in. But anyway, let us know if you saw this movie, Autumn in the City. Let us know your thoughts. Did it hit or miss the hallmark for you? Yeah, please. Yeah. And uh, we will see you next episode. Bye. Bye.